Hey everyone, so I'm going to do a video that's kind of a discovery video really and it's about Toddle which I mentioned recently which is a front-end no-code app development platform and it's one I've been keeping my eye on for some time and I think it was like the back end of 2022 when a pretty prominent member of the Bubble community suddenly tweeted Bubble's great but I'm also looking at some of the new platforms and or, or looking at a new platform and everyone was like ah, really wow what's this great new platform you know because this is a real bubble acolyte this guy and somebody who's been part of the community for a good few years longer than I have and uh, everyone was searching around trying to find what he was talking about because he never actually named it and I came across Toddle during all of that sort of stuff and I was like, it must be Toddle, it must be Toddle. Anyway, it turned out it wasn't Toddle, it was something else, uh, Brevity or something like that that seems to have sort of gone by the wayside. Nobody's heard of it, it's not really in the mix or in the discussion for the alternatives uh, as a result of the bubble pricing debacle. So, <clears throat> anyway, so I've kept my eye on it and one of the things that I found out early on is that they were developing... The platform in the platform so that sounds like really weird stuff but i'm not sure how they're doing it but it just proves how powerful that the platform is that it, they can develop it in itself and one of the things the advantages that they say that, that gives them which is one of the big things about no code is that anybody in the team they don't have to be a developer can work on the platform itself so that's a, a great thing so it's been started by two danish guys yeah, so I'm, it's just something that I'm, has really intrigued me. It's still early days, let's be honest. It's not something that I'm thinking about jumping onto. Uh, it's still early days, and they admit themselves that they wouldn't expect, it's still in beta, they wouldn't expect people to go into production apps uh, just yet with this. They're still developing, it's still adding new features. Uh, <clears throat> but everything that I've seen looks really good. So, and they're still working on the documentation, still working on tutorials. But I thought I'd make this video and come at it from a bubble developer's perspective because you know prior to looking at Toddle actually I was a strictly a, a bod man a bubble only developer in terms of no code tools anyway so it took a lot to turn my head and Toddle turn my head even before all of this nonsense that's gone on with bubble so let's have a look shall we so the other thing that's interesting about Toddle is that they've just announced their pricing and they tweeted that out the other day Uh, I think it's this one here. Uh, yep, June the 19th. So let's have a look on their website. This. So <clears throat> what they're basically doing is they're planning to have a free plan, the hobby plan. So it's a public project, so you can't lock it down. It's not sort of password protected. You know, the DC is a non-commercial project, which is fair enough. You know, if you... If you are selling a business or using it in a business, it's only right that you pay them. It's only the right thing. You get the full features of Toddle. The support is via Discord, which, by the way, at the moment is excellent. I got an answer really, uh, really fast when, whenever I've uh, asked a question on there. Uh, you get a Toddle.site domain, Toddle branding, and a million, a maximum of a million requests. And a million requests is API calls and page visits. So that's a lot. So you're going to have to really scale to get beyond that. What's interesting is that they've got this here. So if you pay $5 a month, then you get you can make your project private. So you don't have to go to the startup plan, the next plan along, to, get the, to make your project private if you want to. Now, from what I can see is that it doesn't matter how many apps that you have, kind of that's the plan that you're on. But I think that the projects are per project. I, I, I can't be sure about that. There's no inf more more information on that, but I think that that's that that's how they do it. So on the proper pay plan, which they only have one at the minute because Pro is kind of like getting in touch with us, uh, is it's well let's have a look at the yearly. If you pay yearly, it's sixteen dollars a month. So, so what's that? One hundred and seventy. My maths is terrible. One hundred and seventy-two. Is that right? One hundred and seventy-two. I don't know. No, no, one hundred eighty-two. One hundred ninety-two. 
<laughs> and I'm a programmer, would you believe it? Uh, and uh, which includes everything in there. You, you can use a custom domain, no branding, you get email support. And this is interesting, a free kickoff call with a <clears throat> toddler engineer, which could be could be quite valuable actually to be able to do that. I take it that's only gonna happen in the early days because uh, that certainly probably wouldn't be very scalable. Uh, and again, you get per 1 million requests above 1 million, so it's only $2. An extra two dollars to uh, to deal with all of those API requests that you're going to do. So compared to what we've seen with Bubble, admittedly there's no back end here, so that's something to take into account. Again, to make your uh, your project private, that's four dollars, and I, I assume that that's per project. I, I, from what I can gather, from what I've seen so far, the the plan is for all of your projects, but the private project thing is per project. And then this is per user basically. So it, this goes up to three users, three developers. So it's $48 a month. That's fairly significantly lower than Bubble, to be fair. So if you want to pay monthly, then obviously it goes up $20 and then $5. So yeah, so that's two, two fifty. It's kind of like $300 to, if you want a private project and to pay for it and pay for it monthly. Whereas uh, it's, 448 and 192 is 130 <laughs> whatever it's about $240 yeah so you're saving quite a bit if you if you do that so and it well yeah they, they tell you here so you're going to save $60 so say $240 yeah uh, so let's have a look down here projects are public by default <clears throat> to encourage the toddler community to share and learn from each other. Fair enough, you, we do. We used to do that in Bubble, we still do it in Bubble, I suppose. With things that you just want to help people with, you can just have a, a public uh, project. Projects can be turned private, you can you can work in stealth mode, you can opt for a private version of your, in this way, your project is hidden, hidden from the public. Commercial, public pro, commercial projects should use a startup plan. If you promote a, a product service you should consider a we consider you a startup user we think it's fair to charge you if you're doing business i think that's fair enough i think if you're a solo entrepreneur that doesn't presently have a business that, that isn't generating revenue and you're developing it but ultimately will be for business i i think and again i i don't know but they would probably let you do the the hobby plan so you actually plan to launch it uh because yeah you're pre-revenue but if you already got a business or you creating tools for a business or whatever then it's only right that you pay you know these guys have come up with a great tool and i don't know what their situation is whether they're bootstrapping or whether they've got funding or, or whatever it is or maybe they've got an agency that's kind of funding the development of this in the background either way they've obviously been at it for a long time so uh, they deserve you know the rewards for that effort okay and when you want to scale beyond three people it's not a problem issue for me so yeah, so I think pretty reasonable pricing compared to what we've seen. Obviously, there's no back end stuff going on, uh, but let's have a look at Bubble. What you pay, ignoring the back end because I'm not using Bubble's back end. Uh, so let's go to the pay monthly. So obviously it's free. You're limited to uh, I think there's like 200 records in your database. Uh, if you want to go with 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 Bubble's database, obviously I don't, and I'm assuming that, that you don't. That you wanted to use a different front end, a back end. <clears throat> so you're just paying thirty two dollars if you pay monthly uh, to use a custom domain and uh, basic work version control. Just uh, uh, save points that you can have. Yeah, so thirty two dollars compared to that's a month if you pay monthly compared to Toddle, where you will pay. To keep your projects private anyway which is built in with bubble you pay 25 so it's cheaper than bubble <clears throat> obviously you don't get a back end with with toddle you just get the the front end tool but if you want to start for free for example you can start with that if you if you uh, if you want to keep it private it just cost you five dollars provided you're not already running a business and you're pre pre-revenue then you can just pay for that five dollars and Zano is free as well to start off with so if you wanted to use Toddle with with uh, with Zano it's basically free if you if you're happy to give it projects or five dollars a month you want to keep uh, make it private 
and that's all your costs that you're going through while you're developing your app. If you were going to go with Toddle, like I say, they're coming out. I think that they're just launching this just to get people generating some revenue, see who's serious, and see what kind of response that they get back. But they are saying at the minute that you know, develop small things, learn the skills, don't develop production ready apps because it's still in beta. So, yeah. Okay, so if we're ready to get going, we can we can have a look. So let's click open app. I'm already signed in. So I don't have a project yet, so I'm going to click for a new project. And I'm just going to create a blank template here rather than look at any of these. And, okay, you can pick an emoji. I don't know. Whichever one you want. I'm going to pick that one. And I'm just going to call it... Uh, demo I'll tell you what just discovery uh, okay so it's going to go away and create that for us like I said I don't I've been into it a few times but nothing serious I haven't had the time to really delve in and the minute I've come across any serious things that I couldn't do, I kind of had to duck out of it just due to time. But this is like the projects page. It obviously, if you had more, then you do that. And this is all stuff that you can do. So you can have a custom domain. Uh, now, the first thing you've got to do is create a branch. So I assume that as you're developing the app, it's stored against a branch. And then you can publish that branch into live or whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, it's got, from what I can gather, it's got full version control. And if you have a look at Bubbles pricing, uh, you've got to go to the growth plan to be able to get the premium version control. Whether it is comparable, I, I really don't know because I've never used this one. Uh, you know, I'm a solo developer, so I just use this one and the the basic version control with just the save points does it. So I don't know whether if you've got two or three team members, uh, whether the version control is as good as bubbles i i couldn't tell you but it does save it against a branch it's compulsory so we have to create a branch so i'm just going to call this one start and create that okay so when we're ready we can just go into edit okay and we're into our full-on development environment so in some ways it's similar to bubble if you've used WeWeb, i mean i've used WeWeb only in terms of trying to learn it and play with it it's quite similar to WeWeb. you i mean you, you just look at it compared to bubble just i mean just look at this you know it's like switching between 2010 and <laughs> 2023 now obviously you can create a fantastic looking uis in in bubble but that their ui itself in terms of development mode is is in serious need of an upgrade uh, so anyway, so you've got your elements tree on the left, just like you do with Bubble, and you've got your property inspector or whatever they call it in Bubble. What do they call it? I think it's a property inspector. They might have a different name for it. Uh, I should know that, shouldn't I? After all this time, but I've always just called it the property inspector. Uh, over here, and you've got different tabs. The main one is this styling one. Now the styling tab is kind of like the Bubble appearance and layout all combined into one so yeah there's no difference between the two and there is a lot more flexibility there is a lot more css controls over compared to what bubble gives you so and it can be a bit difficult to if you like <clears throat> to translate that over if there's no equivalent in bubble okay right so in terms of containers it's a little bit like bubble remember in bubble remember like it's always in the past <laughs> uh, so right in bubble we obviously have groups and they're the containers and then we can set the container layouts and all of this type of thing so we have a similar thing in toddle as well which is these things here which is direction so if you like this arrow here this means column and then that's row and then you've got the opposite way column reversed and row reverse which is different than in bubble and then we've got all these settings which we have in bubble as well and the gap is the same in bubble as when we do apply 
gap spacing between elements and we can put that in there as well okay the main difference that i've seen actually is <clears throat> is the type of containers that you can use so we have this at the top here which is a div and it, the, the, a div is a standard container in html basically when bubble generates html for your app each group is gets turned into a div so bubbly uh, toddle is trying to keep as close to html as it possibly can which is why you've got like a h1 tag which is the header of the page which uh, the search engines for seo will notice that and then within that then they've got the the actual header the actual text of that now if you have a look here you, in the property inspector you don't actually specify any of the layout details of it you don't even specify the font and things like this you actually do that in its parent container and you do that in all of this here so it's a little bit different uh, to bubble because in bubble when you drop a say a text there you can actually do all of the layout stuff and specify the all of the font stuff that you want you go back to uh, toddle and basically the text element relies on the settings on its parent rather than the text element itself okay so that's a little bit different as well and the same with this one here this has got a p which is paragraph in html which means it's like a text container so it's, it's a little bit like a div but it's predominantly for text it doesn't have to be but it predominantly is and again you set all of these things up in here and you don't set it up on the text however a paragraph if you look doesn't have all the things that a div has all of these layout directions and vertical and horizontal and gap spacing uh, a paragraph is a purely a container for text or for other elements and it doesn't so in other words if you wanted to define a paragraph then you what you would do is you put the paragraph inside a div which is how it is there so what's happening here is that the div is controlling everything that's going on okay and at the minute it's, it's if the equivalent of a column container that we have in bubble which means that everything's top to bottom so if i was to set that to row then we'd get this effect as well okay so yeah so a lot of it is similar and a lot of it is, is very very different so if we have a look at this text here let's say that when you hover over this we want to put it in a different color and let's just see how we can do that so so we've got this thing called default and then we've got style here and if we click the plus at the side of style we get a lot of options out of the box here so we can say hover and so when we've got that selected under hover everything that's down here then is in related to uh, get the hover effect so let's go down here and let's change the background shall we oh the text let's go for the text and let's change the color and now at the minute from what i can gather they're they're very very close to releasing the color picker but at the minute you just get this kind of uh effect which is just to pick one of their predefined colors uh across the spectrum but i believe that they're very close to having a a color picker where you can put your own hex codes and all of that sort of stuff but let's just prove a point so let's say that when they hover it we want it in orange okay so if we go to default we can see that the text color is gray 500 when they hover over it we want the orange 700 so to test it you can do it in two one or two ways you can just go into this test mode here which is just going to like turn it into like a live mode to run it within the editor so let's do that and then we yeah okay so there we go so that's the the hover how you do the hover uh, and then if we click the pause we'll go back to that one again uh, <clears throat> if we want to do uh, to preview it in its own page we can click on this at the top and then go into preview and then it opens a page for us uh, and then we've got it in its own using its <clears throat> own URL so we'll leave that open there because that's what, how we used to do it in bubble this is fine for little checks but this is really how you want to do it you all get the banner on the top saying this up this app has been updated refresh you'll have to manually re refresh it anyway right okay so 
yeah, so he's, he's kind of this this thing like this this test thing where you can flick between test and edit mode. Uh, WeWeb has that uh, very similar thing. What I found with WeWeb is unless you're actually on the paid version, you can't actually open it in a separate web page with its own URL. Could be wrong there. I couldn't get it to do it, so maybe somebody who's used WeWeb will put me right with that one. Uh, in terms of styles, these are the different ones that you can have. Now, in terms of in Bubble, like you can, it's pretty easy to theme your app using styles. You can create your own styles and you can have your own style variables and things like this. Uh, and it's very, very useful. In Toddle, they've got this thing here that's called Project Theme coming soon. So, as I say, a lot of it's in development. So at the minute, from what I can gather, you, you can't have a general theme or general style. Uh, that's something that's coming in the future. Uh, but what you can have is a very powerful component framework, which is puts everything else to shame, which I won't get to in this video, but maybe I will in a future one, uh, because it, it, that really is good. So, yep, yeah, so uh, just click back on, where are we? Uh, where are we? How do we get back to where? Oh, there we go, okay. Uh, I'm still, <laughs> still new to this. Okay, so let's click on on that one. Now let's go back to styles. So we've got all these here and you can see at the bottom here you've got like these different mobile. Yeah okay. Now from what I can gather by default when you're looking at this default style that's mobile first. So if you remember in bubble kind of like you're working with it almost like a <clears throat> on a desktop canvas and then you set different breakpoints on conditionals or whatever to change things as you squeeze it down. In Toddle, the default is the, the mobile view, and then you need to deal with it as you get bigger. So let's say, for example, that uh, when, it, <clears throat> when you expand it out into desktop, let's say I want this font to get bigger as you do that. So what I can do is add a new style, and then we've got these breakpoint things. Okay, and you, you can't narrowly, you can't narrowly hone it down like you can with bubble maybe that's going to come uh, so what I'll do then I'll say on the large screen and I'll done there and I will say that the text size and again I'm not sure why they've done this why they don't let you granularly define the size of fonts the color of fonts all of this it will probably come this is probably like a, the way that they decided to do it because you know when you're developing an app uh, you make you make choices essentially. So that's the minute it's large. Let's make it extra large uh, in desktop mode. Now, what's a little bit odd is that you can see twelve hundred, but that large uh, style doesn't kick in until you get to fourteen forty, basically. So let's see if we can get it there by stretching it. Well, actually, it went smaller, didn't it? But you get the gist, it changed anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah. Okay, so let's just go in here and refresh this. So this is definitely 1400, so let's have a look. What did we do wrong there? I don't want to spend too long on it. Uh, large. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on actually. Excel, I don't know. That make a difference. Let's uh uh no nope, you've got to do it in test. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to have a play around with that at the beginning, at the minute. So, uh, I'll tell you what, let's just try something something else. Let's delete that one. Again, I'm only going off what I've been told at this point. So, let's just try this. So I'm going to make it as small. Done. And I'm going to set the... Ah! Am I on the right one? Yes, I'm on the right one. Okay. Uh, yeah. I thought so. So let's go and ah right there you go. It's set to five XL. 
Yeah, it said to 5XL originally, so I'm not sure where they're getting that from because I don't see the option on, on, on there. Uh, okay, right, at least I've worked it out anyway. So the point is, is that you can have different styles according to uh, <clears throat> to break points, basically. Uh, and also all these different uh, conditions. In in bubble, generally, we've only, we only get like the hover effect, don't we? Or maybe the checked effect or something like that as, as standard when we're using sort of conditional. So when we're in, uh, let's have a look. When we're in conditionals, uh, we generally have like, uh, when, when they hover and stuff, I've not got it set up there anyway. Okay, I digress. Okay, so let's have a look at trying to get some data down here because like I say, Toddle is a front end tool doesn't have a back end you bring your own back end so I've got Xano set up and here I've got some API's that I've set up with my database on my tables and everything uh, so what I've done is I've made because I don't want to go into auth in this because it's just gonna confuse things I've created a endpoint which is gonna get us a list of leads where is it uh, there we go leads toddle okay and what I've done is you can see here that I've uh, I've unsecured it if, if, <laughs> essentially so uh, that means I don't have to be authorized so we don't need to log in or anything like that yep yeah, so it's just going to get a list of, of leads from the database there's nothing there's no uh, <coughs> authorization or checks or anything going on so got beautiful joins in there as you know i love joins joining all the database tables together to get a result which we couldn't do with bubbles database uh so okay and i get all this beautiful input out there so what i'm going to do then is if i run in run and debug this and then just run it you can see i'm going to get all my data about my leads all in one big list and it's gonna be absolutely beautiful uh Getting all of my details about every single lead in one hit and we can see just how quick it was to, to get that so what we've got here is we've got leads leads underscore toddle let's just go back to our main api there let's get our key okay and i'm, I'm having to hide that because this is actually a the database and api for an app that i'm building so i don't want you anybody getting hold of it okay so <clears throat> in bubble sorry not in bubble in toddle old habits die hard what you can do is if you look you've got these elements and then we can go to data and then we've got variables and we've got all sorts of things so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go to apis i'm going to say plus and i'm just going to say this i'm just going to call it leads because that's what it is uh, this auto fetch thing by the way if you, with it ticked whenever you've got any proper APIs that it recognizes it will run it right away so let's just have a look at this here and okay so that's the actual API and I'm going to add a path in there separately in fact I'll tell you what I'm going to do because this is quite a good way of doing it rather than do it that way I'm going to just uh, delete that go to variables I'm gonna say uh, Xano API and I'm actually just gonna paste that in so I've got it in a variable okay and let's do that that's good so I'll go back to my API and then let's call it leads again and this time I'm actually gonna uh, <coughs> pick it up from this variable I've stored and the way you do that in total is you use this which is uh, formulas or functions whichever way you want to call it which is exactly the same in bubble when you go go anywhere in here and you say uh, I don't know let's say where's the, the background style flat color and you then you know you you go to there and you say insert dynamic data it's exactly the same thing apart from in in toddle you get this little FX uh, key here so what we're going to do is select that one and what we want to do is we want to pick it up from Xano API okay and then that's going to put it in there for us uh, we'll 
try and cover formulas. It's, it's thrown me a little bit the way that Toddle deals with formulas. I've kind of get in there with it, but only just. So, okay, so at the minute it's got that, and then we'll add the path, which is going to be, adds the backslash in there, and the path is going to be our uh, leads toddle thing. So let's just grab that. We don't need the backslash, but I can just delete that when we come to it. So as soon as I do that, we should get the data back, and we do. So you can see we get the response and then the data, and then if we close all this up, we can see all the records that we get. Remember as well, in programming in general, and nearly every other platform you'll work with, other than Bubble, has what we call uh, zero-based lists zero based arrays so your first element will always your first item in a list will always start with zero rather than one okay so we've got all of this data back now so we can see uh, unfortunately we can't scroll here which is a bit unfortunate it'd be great if you could scroll and see all of your data so maybe if the toddle guys are ever get a chance to watch this then maybe they'll listen to that one but we've got our api back we got our data back there, no problem at all. So what I'll do, I'll delete these here. So what you can do is, in fact, I'll delete all of this. So what you can do is just right click and select delete, or you can just press, I think you can just press that anyway. Uh, so I'll just right click and delete <clears throat> in there, leaving us with the main div. So I think, and again, I could be wrong, you know, I'm, I'm learning on the go a little bit here. What you can do is, your main content should live in a main container okay the other thing as well is you can't actually name these like you know in bubble you can you can come in and you can say i always name them like this where you pre proceed it with a g and then it's a then name it and at least you know then that it's a group okay in total you can't again something maybe that they'll address you just have this and then uh you deal with that but then again it, in terms of the workflows, the way that they work, it's not quite the same in terms of having to reference these things. So it's not as important. So we've got a main container in there now. So what we want to do is create a list then from the API data that we've got back from, from Xano. So the way that we do this is we would have like a list element. Uh, where are I? List. Okay. So let's drop a list on there. And list the ul is an unordered list and each one li is a list item behind the scenes this is what bubble does for you but in, in toddler it's kind of more exposing the the native html way of doing it and um, but it does work like bubble is that we can what we can do is we can put repeat on this list item so it turns it into like a repeating group a similar sort of thing but it creates three items for us and then we just deal with the, the first item and then it, it it just handles that for us so what i'm going to do i'm going to delete these bottom two because i don't need them i don't think and what i can do then is you can do right left, left, right click and you can click this here to say repeat okay and that's going to open this formula again for you and so what i can do i just need to point it to the api so i can just say uh, leads okay in there and i need to point it to the data and you can see it's actually got the data there for me so uh <clears throat> yeah so and then you can go as far as you like in there but no i don't want to do that i just oops it's deleted the whole thing on me okay leads and then data and then that's the data that's going to get output i'm not sure what this is actually can i get rid of that yeah okay i don't know quite what that was so, so basically, I'm just saying, this is like the input. Where, where am I going to? It's asking me where's the input, where's the data going to come from. I'm telling it from the API, and then the output basically is the data that it's going to use where I'm asking it to. So when we're done, we just click this little tick, and we can see it's got as many list items as we've returned from the database, which I think is 11, 11 items altogether. Okay, so that's like your repeating group in Bubble, effectively. So in in Bubble, you've got your repeating group on there. Let's have a look. Uh, where are we? Yeah. Inside different containers, repeating group. Tell it where the data is coming from, and 
I mean, in this particular one, I'm using Bubble, but it's still connecting to a Xano API. So it's just the equivalent of that, of the repeating group. And then obviously then we can then put the content in there. And remember, this is just a text. And remember what we said before that you can't give it any layout details with just a text. It has to be in a, in a container whether that's you know in, in bubble it be the group but in this one it's a div so what we will do then is i will add it and the other thing as well in toddle when you add an element make sure you're clicking on the the element that you want to add it into so i'm going to do that one and i'm going to say go down to layout and then layout and then div or i could just type in uh, div and it will do it for me as well Okay, so let's put it to the bottom. So let's just drag it up just like you can in the elements tree in Bubble. And I'm going to need to put that inside the div. There we go. Uh, so, but what we do have, you can specify things on the on the LI as well. So I can say, right, okay. Uh, it's, it's a column direction, which means it's top to bottom, which is what you're going to want. You're going to want the data top to bottom. Okay. So in this case on the div though, I'm going to want the data I'm going to want the columns sort of going left to right so on the div i'm going to set it as a row container uh, that's all fine and then what i can do then is on the list item again the fx is just exactly the same as here with this one where you've got the expression insert dynamic data don't you know don't get it confused it's more complicated than it is so I'll just get rid of that standard text, click the FX, and then we get a little formula thing here, which is just a more glorified version, if you like, of Bubbles Expression Editor. It's just exactly the, it's not exactly the same, but you know, but you know, when you tick the, uh, when you say insert dynamic data, you then get the expression, and you get the drop down of different things you can do. This is just the equivalent of it. So what I can do then is to say, right, now <clears throat> in, you see, we've got this item here, in the under repeat item it knows the context of it is inside a repeat so it's so if you can imagine item is a bit like in bubble where where you're inside a repeating group and you would say uh current cells so it's the same thing this uh, item is the same as current cell in bubble okay so we can say item and then what data do we want so having a look at all of this stuff i want the contact and then inside of that i want the contact's first name okay and then that's going to get me the data that i return from there and it's going to give me straight away notice actually i'm doing all of this actually in in edit mode okay so i can put it into test mode and whatever uh bubble does this from sam's and total does the same thing make the largest connection because it does like bubble does it automatically saves it in the background for you so if i go into this one and i just refresh the page We'll get the same thing as well okay uh good stuff now just going back to that let's stick it in edit mode again and let's go back so you want to edit that that function or you've got it in function of formula as they call it dynamic expression as we'd say in bubble let's say i wanted to put the two together the first and the last name so what i can do there is i'm gonna add i'm gonna add uh, a f and unfortunately it doesn't let you scroll but you can sort of search and I can say I want to concatenate okay which is I think it's like the append like the append uh, command in expression in bubble so I'm going to concatenate and I'm going to say I want to plus it and I'm just going to this confuses the hell out of me this to be honest uh, I'm just going to blank that out and I'm, then I'm going to oh no uh I'm going to add that one and I'm just going to delete that one and then uh, yeah okay so it's null and I want a space and then in here this one rather than first name I'm going to say uh, and again you know there's all these little things that, that they that they can improve with like it as a type it just scrolls down to the thing what you can do though is you can uh, sort of move things around and you can put it into full screen so if you need more space you can do that there and I'm going to go to last name okay so we've got first name concatenates with a space concatenates with the last name and the API okay 
click the tick and now we've got all of this information in there so we're we're doing all right i think we're doing okay so we want to add more columns to this than what's already there and uh, we could do with it just you know you've been spread out across the, the the page rather than just being to the width of whatever content that we've got in there at the minute so if we go to our main container and if we just let's say we make that 85 percent okay that's good enough for us there and yeah so if we just copy so this one is is row okay so we so, so whenever we add something it's going to appear at the next uh, the, the side of it we, uh, i've got some gap space in there 15 pixels so let's just copy uh let's just do copy and paste into there and then okay so let's just get rid of that and go to our formula and go to item and this one the business name is under business entity and name okay and then we've got all of this now notice it's sort of not aligning properly and the reason being is that we're not sizing these correctly so okay now obviously we can't size these it doesn't give us the option to so we're going to have to have them in their own container okay so let's say that we add an element a paragraph container and let's drag that up to underneath the div okay let's get rid of that one that it's added for us and let's drop this one in here uh, now let's just set the font extra small. Let's just say uh, the base or small, whatever. Uh, Grey. So a bit lighter than that. And then we should then be able to set a minimum width. Uh, we can set a standard width, or we can do fixed width, or we can do mid min width and max width so i'm not going to mess about too much on this but let's say that the minimum width is let's say 200 that's more like it okay and the maximum width is 250 just as an example okay and all right okay so that's done the job and then the the, the gap spacing uh should be in play let's click on the div get rid of the gap space and then just make sure that it has the right effect so there we go okay so go back there and then we, we've also got this undo thing which is we used to in bubble which is great okay and so <clears throat> we kind of got our we've kind of got our data on there haven't we okay so let's on our list height is eight let's set that to now because it's eight that means it's 32 is it so let's set it to let's set it to 12 oh no because you see immediately over type it it goes back to that one so let's go to 40 px there we go that's better right go 50 okay <clears throat> so this font on the name is a little bit too big so uh now notice that that is on the paragraph the setting for that font so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, copy the paragraph paste it onto the div and move this one there delete the one it's added for us and that way yeah we've got the same font on both on there so okay so what i'm trying to mim mimic really is to some extent anyway is this where we've got the contact name the business name and we've got the email address here okay so 
now that appears underneath it so we need a column container in there at some point so because we can't specify things under the the paragraph so we're going to need another div so let's just uh, add an element under this and we let's say layout is a div and um, we're going to just rise that up to there and this one is going to be a yeah that's going to be a column so that one's a row this one's going to be a column and then we're just going to pop these under this one and yeah okay so let's see what happens if we copy this one and then paste it in there okay no it's put it side by side because that just me must be how the yeah because remember we were saying we can't actually set that in there so we each one so it needs to be in its container so what we can do then is let's just get rid of that and we'll copy our paragraph paste it in there there we go so we've got one one below the other okay so now what we want is the email address in this one okay so let's get that's just a test data so we've got our formula there so let's just get rid of the concatenate concatenate I should say so what we want is we want the item and let's have a look what do we want is it under contact and yeah so we've got the contacts and then it comes back as the contact point email and that's stored in the info field okay so that's what the what we get from the api okay so what we can do then is we just need to make this a lot lot smaller so where's our Again, we need to do it on paragraph so let's do excess yeah okay we can see what's happening there because this is overflowing uh, now I don't know enough about this to to do much about it to be honest I'm still learning but yeah we should be able to overflow it but for now you know uh, we've got the div for that is there a minimum width on this no there isn't because I think the minimum width is set on there yeah okay right so what we'll do we'll set it, this on the div and we'll say that we want a minimum maximum and it's going to be 250 and 300 okay and then this one yeah, we can just get rid of it I think because it's just going to default to its container and the same with this and that one as well uh, this one is relying on a on a on its own paragraph so it's not belonging in, in inside a div so we've done exactly the same as what we do in bubble really there is on here where I've got the first and last name and then the email address okay so they belong into a an overall group which is a row container side by side and then in here uh, the contact info here which contains the contact email contact name is a column so we just done more or less the same thing as we would in bubble okay so what's next what can we what can we do next with this one so I'm going to show you something that, that took me ages to work out and I actually got the answer from uh, Andreas at, at Toddle on this one. So let's say that when you click this you want it highlighted in a different colour to let you know that it's the selected record. Okay. So first of all how do we know it's a selected record? So the best thing to do just as we would in, in Bubble. So I've got this here so you, you click on it and it highlights it purely because we've got a conditional in here uh, on this group that says that the current cells lead ID is selected leads ID so selected lead in bubble is a custom state the equivalent of custom states in 
toggle our variables so we go to variable and let's create a new variable and we'll call it selected lead okay we will just set it to zero as a default okay so we know when we need to set it so obviously when you're setting custom states in in bubble you'd obviously just have a workflow behind the button and you're doing or behind the, the group that you want to click on and we do the same thing with this so let's go to elements okay i would probably better off letting it be based on this one because that encompasses a whole group so let's do that so what we can do then is we go to events and we get lots more events this is one thing in bubble you don't really get a lot of events you just get the click event okay but let's face it 95 percent of the time that's enough but sometimes it's nice to have other options like drag and drop built in stuff like that anyway click event let's do that and then this is the workflow editor that toddle gives you now obviously you can expand on that to go full screen or you can just go back and do the uh do this quickly here so so when they click i'm going to add an add an action if you like i don't know if they're called actions in in toddle there's not really too much information on workflows to be honest in the docs yet i think they're still updating that so i need to set so i'm going to set selected lead okay and then what we're going to set it to i've got to set it to a formula so i'm going to do that okay and that's the input that's, that's coming in so what i want to do is i just want to set it to what the current items id is from the api okay so let's see what i can do with that so i don't think i i will i'll tell you what let's just add one and i'm gonna set the item So we're going to say set that and what do we want to set it to so it's going to be item id okay and then that's the output so yeah so that should do it that's going to set the value okay so what we'll do just to make sure that that is going to work is i'm just going to drop in a quick uh text element okay i should have has it added it no not yet so if I go to just in here into main and then add an element and I'll just say that I want the, the text element. Okay, and I'll just drag it drag it to the top. Okay, and then I'll just set the formula for that to be uh, the the variable selected lead. So I'm going to display it as they click it. Okay, so let's just go there. Let's run that and let's see. Oh, you can hardly see it. So let's go and just change the uh, on the main so that we uh, into styling. Let's just, where are we? Text color needs to be a light color. Let's set it to that one. Okay, so that's displayed there. So let's run that. So as we click, you can see it's changing. So that's working great as we'd expect so we just what we now need to do is to say okay on each item we need to check to see okay is the id of this particular item the same as the selected id okay that's exactly what we're doing here to decide which which record gets uh, selected okay now on face value Let's go back into edit mode toddle doesn't have conditionals like bubble does so the way this works in bubble is we've got a condition that says that when the current cells leads id is the this id the the selected id then we're going to change its background color so toddle doesn't directly have an equivalent and that is what really threw me but thankfully andreas at toddle is able to help me out with this one so what we're going to do what we have is under attributes so let's go to uh, li that's what we need and we're going to go to attributes and what's great about it is we've got this thing called classes and this is where we can actually define a class with a different style on it 
effectively. So we're going to add one. And let's say we're going to call this selected. Okay, and what we need to do then is to say, well, okay, when is this going to get selected? When is that going to get triggered? When is it going to get shown? When does it apply? What's the conditional? What's the condition for this to show? So it is a conditional effectively. So then we can set up a formula to do this. And then what we can do is we can use a function or a formula called equals. Okay. And what this is saying here is does do two values equal so what we can do there is to say does this items id does it equal and we need to say what 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 we want it to equal to so we need to then let's just go full screen on this and scroll down then we can say does it equal a selected lead okay so at the minute the answer is false so what we're doing there is create a class called selected which we haven't done anything with yet and we're saying let's have a formula to determine when this is actually activated okay and the formula determines that the input of item the input selected lead do they match do they equal and the output is either true or false to give us the condition and so then what we can do is to go to styling and then we go to add a style and you see where we've got class then we can say selected so when selected is being used when that is active based on that condition okay then what we can do then is set a background set a background color uh, and let's say that this one is kind of a, a slightly lighter color like this one and we can see it's done it for us there so let's test this fantastic okay so like I say I was pulling my hair out trying to work this out because there doesn't seem to be anything any equivalent of conditionals but that's its equivalent of conditionals okay so in bubble we we would simply say add a conditional and say this is the condition this is what's going on so we do a similar thing it's just done in a different way in that we go to attributes we set up a class and we set the conditional on the class to say when is that class active and then in the styling then we add that class as a style and then set it on there okay so like there we've got the default of background is gray 800 and then when they select it gray 600 so I absolutely love that little bit about Toddle. So, okay, we've been going a while now, so I think it's time to wrap that up. So if you want me to sort of go a bit deeper with Toddle, I, I am starting to fall for it a little bit. It's kind of, it's got its claws in me, I think. Uh, but like I say, it's, it's just a case of trying to translate what we're used to in Bubble into, into Toddle. So I'll wrap it up there. If you want me to do any more, let me know. Probably what I'll cover is the components and also do auth uh, in there to make sure that we're you know, logging in and, and all of that type of thing. But yeah, I think that's enough for this one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Let me know what you think. Any questions, comments, whatever you want to do. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you soon. Take it easy.